Now I'm a mechanical engineer, and for almost 5 years I've worked in the automotive industry. And something I've learned is that the more problem a car causes you, the more attached you become to it. Something I never expected was, with, was that with this premise one day a video game would be created, and that this game would resonate so much with me. This is Pacific Drive, a survival game that focuses on an old, barely drivable, broken down car. And throughout the story, you'll be fixing it, improving it, and installing it with new abilities. Describing this game is a bit complicated. At its core, it's a survival game, but it's very different from other games of this genre. It has elements of an extraction shooter, and its mechanics, those of a driving game, with a little bit of mechanical workshop simulation. The main loop of the game is that you venture into a zone, collect materials, extract, and return to the shop to fix your car, to make improvements, and then venture even further into the zone to get closer to the center. But the point at which this game is optimized is extremely good. The amount of materials you receive never feels unfair. In case your car breaks down halfway through the journey, there are enough materials around you to fix it. The speed at which we apply upgrades feels very organic, and goes hand in hand with the difficulty of the game, and each extraction feels as exciting as the last. The story of this game centers around a scientist called Oppie, who found a form of energy that will be practically unlimited. This technology will be called LIM, and it seems to come from a completely different dimension. The government will realize Oppie's discovery and along with her will begin to conduct experiments resulting in various anomalies and a lot of radiation to the point where the Olympic Peninsula would become far too dangerous to inhabit. They would build walls around it so that no one would enter and evacuate the area, but Api, along with two other scientists, Francis and Tobias, would stay inside these walls for personal reasons. Here is where we enter. A traveler who drove too close to the wall and ended up being absorbed by an area and linked to a junk car. The only way to survive is to take this car to the center of the zone, venturing deeper and deeper into unstable terrain which facing dangerous anomalies. As with any survival game, there must be elements that endanger the player's integrity. In Minecraft, we have zombies. In Ark, there are dinosaurs. And in the forest, there are wherever these things are. Here, in Pacific Drive, we have anomalies. However, in these games, these anomalies are not actively trying to kill or hurt you. Each one simply has effects that under the right conditions pose a danger to you and your car. For example, the abductor. It grabs anything it finds and pulls it a short distance with its little claw. Or here, the tourists. Mannequins that appear out of nowhere and explode upon contact. They are easy to avoid, but in an unfortunate event where an adopter pulls you towards a cluster of these tourists, I don't think your call will come out unscathed. I saw a video by Skillup who compared these anomalies to fire, and I really like this comparison. For someone who's never seen a flame, the only way to know that it burns is by touching it and hurting yourself a bit. That doesn't mean the fire is inherently evil. With the right application, fire has become a really useful tool. And anomalies are the same way. The only way to know what they do is by touching them and burning ourselves a bit. But that doesn't mean we can't use them to our advantage. Maybe an abductor can remove another anomaly that has stuck to your car. The tourists can often throw gifts at you. And some other anomalies can even help you to go faster, jump obstacles, or even charge your battery. It all depends on the knowledge you've gained when you initially encounter them and for you to reason a way of applying them. And like these anomalies, there are many more. Even after 20 hours of gameplay, I haven't seen them all, each with its own unique and interesting effect that will surely make your car's existence near impossible if you don't know them well. Since it's a fairly linear game, the developers seem to have focused a lot on mission design with this aspect in mind. But none of these missions feel boring, each one feels creative and fun. Some can lead you to jump towards a giant anomaly or race against time at a full speed. If you manage to fulfill your objective on the journey, or the mission, to return to your shop you must take your car to a portal that will open somewhere in the area where you are. And this is one of the most exciting parts of the game, because after a long journey, collecting materials, where your car has probably suffered damage, now you have to race to this portal, because if the zone catches up with you, it could mean the end for you and your car. Losing everything you had achieved in that journey. And this leads to really exciting moments full of adrenaline, driving on the ground, dodging out obstacles at full speed to be able to return to your workshop. And here is where my favorite part of the game begins. In your workshop there's no danger. It's just you, your tools, and your car. 
You come back here, you'll focus on maintaining your car and customizing it. This part of the game is my favorite because there's something charming about just taking care of your car. I know it sounds like a bit tedious part of the game having to maintain your car, change parts and repair um, maybe a broken tire, but the way that the mechanic of inspecting, um, creating and repairing is built, it makes it very intuitive and entertaining. If you've ever known a car for more than three years, you know that the older cars always have this little quirks, like something weird, a door that can be only opened from the inside, a weird sound when you put it in reverse or something along those lines. And these defects make the car feel more special, more personality, more ours. Here we find something similar with the quirks. From time to time, as your car receives damage or interacts with anomalies, quirks will appear in your car that will affect its operation. Maybe when you turn left, your door opens, when you close another, the horn sounds, or when you turn on the windshield wipers, the gauze gauge goes crazy. These are completely random. They can range from something insignificant to something useful and even to something really, really annoying. The only way to fix them is to physically test them with a the car to know under what conditions this quirk occurs and then solve it with this very fun mechanic using this little computer. The story this game presents is very good. Even though we only interact with three characters through a radio, the story that unfolds throughout our journey touches on themes of companionship and grief in a very relatable way, supported by incredibly good voice performances. From the beginning, every character you hear is so full of life and personality, and this doesn't stop throughout the story. How did you explain it? It was like identifying a whale's favorite color using only the wake it leaves behind. The rest was science mumbo jumbo. It's a form of electromagnetic imprint. Anyway. Ah, the Bigfoot mural! <laughs> My personal favorite! Every event you experience with them, you can hear the reaction and the emotions that pass through their voice. You can feel that these three characters have a story, that you arrived at a place they have known and studied for years. You get to know them and their past, why they decided not to evacuate, and you can appreciate their change and development throughout the game. Maybe this is more personal, but I love the theme of a game about experiments gone wrong resulting in these anomalies that defy the nature and physics of our world, seemingly like a glitch caused by the collision of different dimensions. It gives me vibes of a Remedy game like Control or Alan Wake that even after you finish the game you still want to know more about this mysterious world. All of this is supported by music that elevates every moment, and an artistic direction that leaves me amazed with every journey. Along with the mysterious and paranormal theme of the game, the music and views that accompany you on every journey are a perfect mix that make you feel amazed and intrigued by this world. And rather than trying to explain it to you, I prefer to just show it. Without a doubt, this game will be among my favorites of the year, but it's far from being a perfect game. For starters, this game is a lot of driving, and I mean that in every sense. Yes, it's a lot of accelerating, dodging obstacles, and going at full speed, but it's also putting on the handbrake, turning off lights, windshields, get up, getting out to change tire, repair doors, charge batteries, fill the tank, park the car, and well, drive in general. Yes, the fun parts, but also the not so fun parts. Every time you venture deeper into the zone, you have to go back to the places you've already visited. And although this adds to the immersion of a long car trip, it can also become pretty tiring and repetitive towards the end of the game. We start reaching the deeper zones and you have to go through four other places that you already knew before. It just really gets a bit tedious. The menus are confusing to navigate and the controls can often feel cumbersome. Although all of this adds to the beginning of to the feeling of being in a workshop in the 90s, moving the parts of the car around your workshop, it's not really that fun. The controls start to make sense eventually, but the menus don't. The menus just they just suck. The sum of all these things, the mechanics, the driving, the looting, the workshop, creates such an immersive experience that you end up that you end up forming a bond with this car. Combined with the, arti the, the artistic direction of mysterious and anomalous properties, it achieves a unique and fun experience in this game that I can easily recommend to anyone interested.